She has a, an award-winning, three times award-winning podcast and a business that is thriving, helping marginalized communities to, you know, with, with entrepreneurship, digital entrepreneurship, and all the things. And her podcast is named Yo Quiero Dinero. Whoa. You said that really well. Hey. So she's a Latina money expert, and we are so proud to have Janice Torres on our stage today. Welcome her. Give her a hand, everyone. that this is terrifying. <laughs> and I don't know why Finpon asked me to do this, but um, channeling the good energy, thank you all for being so supportive in everything that I've done here. Um, I wanna talk to you a little bit about growing your community as a content creator. And uh, it's one of the main things that people always ask me about because I've kind of been doing this for a little bit. I am an award-winning podcaster, blogger, and content creator that has been doing this for 10 years now, which is like wild to me to even think about that. Um, I definitely became a content creator before video was a thing, and I became a blogger and a podcaster because I did not actually want to have to show my face for anything. I swore, you know, I could be an anonymous blogger, nobody cares who I am, and I could just have a podcast and no one would care what I look like because they just wanted to listen to my voice, but, you know, then we got TikTok and Instagram Reels and the rest of that's history, so... So much for that. <laughs> but uh, community is at the heart of the work that I do. So as a Latina, I build profitable brands that center around the Latino community as well as my identity. You may know me for this first, Yo Quiero Dinero. Uh, this is actually now a five-time Plutus Award-winning podcast. Uh, thank you. With over a million downloads, but that's not how I actually started in my journey. As um, Erica stated in the intro, I actually started this content creation journey as a blogger with Delish Delights. And this is a Latin food blog that reaches 4 million readers a year. So I, I think, you know, I always tell people I became an accidental entrepreneur because I actually didn't realize that I was doing what I'm going to tell you about, which is building community. I was always looking for opportunities to connect with people that I could relate to in conversations about money, in conversations around food, and now my latest project, the Corazon Chronicles podcast, is about the first-gen experience and learning how to have healthy relationships when maybe you didn't see that model growing up. So your community is not just numbers, it's not an algorithm, it is actually a network of people that are your cheerleaders on the ground. And they believe in you. And I think what happens for a lot of us is that there is this focus on the metrics, the data, the algorithm. But what people actually need from you when it comes to building community is a connection. That is what community is. So how do we do that? Well, thanks to my trusty assistant, ChatGPT, <laughs> I came up with a framework. And for any of the coaches out there, if y'all need like really cute acronyms that you can then turn into a framework strategy, ChatGPT is your friend. Okay, so we're gonna go through this six step process and we're gonna talk about how to actually grow your community as a content creator. Now the first one is genuine authenticity. The quote that I really hate hearing is, don't meet your heroes. Because what that says to me is there's a lot of people out here with influence that are actually not who they portray themselves to be. And so they're not being authentic. Your community needs you to be you. I like to say, they need you to be who you are at brunch. Not at work, not in academia. They don't need the code switched version of you. They don't need the academic thesis version of you. They need you to be the real you, okay? Uh, like for instance, if you've listened to my podcast, you will know that I love the F word <laughs> for two reasons. First, I'm from Jersey, so it's kind of like a love language. And uh, <laughs> the second reason is because, you know, there's a lot of things in the finance world that really just make you want to use the F word. So I use it. And uh, it's kind of my thing, but when I first started my podcast, I was definitely trying to be a CNBC talking head. 
and it definitely felt completely inauthentic and I got tired of it and I said, I don't even wanna to listen to this, so why would anybody else? So I had to go back and say, who would I wanna to listen to? How would I have this conversation with my girlfriends if we're having brunch? And that's how I have conducted myself ever since then on the podcast. Another part of being authentic is showing not just the highlight reels, okay? Because we all know that's the easy stuff to talk about. But showing the good, the bad, and the ugly is how you actually make that connection with people and show them all of the aspects that it is to be you. I actually filmed my divorce proceedings, like my court proceedings where the judge you know, finalized all my stuff. And I was able to capture a really iconic moment when the judge was like, girl, you did a good job getting that post up." <laughs> okay? And that was a great opportunity for them to, me to teach my audience, hey, you should probably get a post up because it actually worked out for me. And if I had just hidden behind, you know, the perfect life, the perfect everything, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to teach my audience in a moment that didn't feel great how they could prevent themselves from finding, you know, themselves in financial chaos because of a divorce, which, you know, many people will experience at some point in their lives. And I think that's also important to just not wait until you've hit that milestone to document or, or show what you're up to. Documenting your progress and your growth has been a really big part of my audience's um, support of my community because they've seen me from when I was still in debt, when I was just starting the platform, when I was still reaching out to folks that I had no connection with, they've been able to be a part of that journey. And so documenting that process is really important. This is for all my masochists out here, okay? Who loves to overextend themselves and make commitments to content creation that you know you cannot uphold? Please raise your hand, okay? All right, so part of showing up for your community means actually being realistic about how you can show up for them. Your community needs you to show up constantly, I mean, consistently, not constantly. There's a big difference, right? If you can only record one podcast episode a week, make that the commitment. Don't say you're gonna release an episode every day and then try to do that for a week and then realize it's impossible and then give, make that the reason why you completely give up in the first place. Batching and repurposing content is super critical for you to actually be able to be reliable and realistic for showing up for your audience. This is a great opportunity to create a lot of B-roll content here at FinCon. You know, there's other parts of the world where you could ask somebody to film you walking down the street doing cute stuff and they're gonna be like, what is wrong with you? But you can actually do that here with no judgment. So take advantage. <laughs> and focus on quality over quantity. We've all seen half-assed social media content. Nobody needs it. So if you have to spend more time doing less but being proud of the work that you do, that is better time spent. Being open to collaboration, I have to say that's probably the single biggest reason why I was able to get to a million downloads as quickly as we have. And that's because there's a lot of strength in numbers. You should be reaching out to people in your niche that can complement what it is that you're talking about because you cannot be the smartest person in the room all the time. Nobody wants that. So relying on other content creators to collaborate, making sure that you are Leveraging each other's audiences and building awareness on both sides is really, really powerful. Do not gatekeep. If you have access to resources or connections that you know can help someone, please offer that help. Because when you find yourself in a situation where then you need that support, if you haven't been doing that work to cultivate those relationships and just being open to giving access to resources and connections that you have, you can't expect people to do that for you and share the spotlight with other people. My podcast is primarily stories beyond my own because while it's important for me to share my journey and how I got to where I am today, the whole reason why I started my podcast is because I could not find people of color who were starting businesses, investing, pursuing financial independence, and I needed to find those stories to serve as inspiration for me. So I have no issues sharing the spotlight on my platform and I think that's a big reason why now I have so many people that I can call for favors, for opportunities, for connections, for resources and the community has been so generous because they know that 
I'm not here on some like grandiose self-interested journey. I'm actually here to put on everybody that I can. Creating a welcoming environment, super important. You do that by leading by example. You cannot allow the cynicism and the aggression that can sometimes live on social media to be the environment that people experience when they're on your platforms. I'm very quick to block if you get reckless, okay? I am very quick to dismantle anything that feels oppressive, divisive. We're not doing that on my platform. And you have to be your champion in that, okay? This is your home that you've created. Thank you. Along with that, you have to be open to diverse perspectives. You know, it's one thing to shut down negative and just toxic conversations, but you also have to be willing to listen when there are areas that maybe you just don't have the perspective that you need. And that goes back again to not being the smartest person in the room all the time. And I think it's also important as you grow and as you elevate, because that is going to happen, to get out of your ivory tower. And what I mean by that is do not forget who you were a couple years ago when you first started this. Because the people that are following you are those people now. So remind yourself that even though you think you've got it all together, you, you know, there's nothing that you can do wrong, don't come with a judgmental attitude towards your audience if they're not where you need or where they want to be or where you want them to be. Transparency. Besides the fact that you know, the FTC requires you to disclose when you're affiliated with companies and all that, just from an integrity standpoint, it's super important for you to let people know like, where there may be conflicts of interest when you're working with somebody. I always like to tell people, if you wouldn't recommend this company or this service to your mom, your sister, or someone that you actually care about, you should not be talking about it to your audience, okay? Transparency also requires you to share your beliefs and values because you want people to know who you are and what you stand for. You don't want them to question, is this a safe environment for me? What does this person actually believe in? And you know, there are moments in our existence here as humans where there's external things happening that your audience is going to be looking for you to draw a line in the sand. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to let them know exactly what you believe in and who you are as a person because that builds trust. And also don't be afraid to show your flaws and mistakes. You know, we all have that friend that just like, you know, you're always posting how fabulous their freaking life is, and you're just like, I know what's actually going on behind the scenes, but okay, sis, that's fine. <laughs> Don't be that person. Your people want to know that you're human too. That's how they feel that you are not somebody up here on a pedestal, and that you're actually someone who cares about them, and that they can connect with. And last but not least, the whole point of what we do when we're building community is building human connection. So prioritizing genuine connection over metrics is going to always be the message that I want you to uphold. A thousand loyal followers are better than a hundred thousand fake bots, okay? And you know, you've seen those accounts where it's just like, why do you have 150,000 followers and no one comments on anything? It's because they're not actually real people. Those are creators that are focused on metrics versus actual human connection. Understanding your audience's needs, dreams, and fears is going to help you as a content creator because you're actually going to be able to create content that speaks to those things. And when you make people feel seen through your content, this is how they become loyal. And building relationships that go beyond just online interactions is so paramount. When you have the opportunity to do live, in-person events, whether that is going and organizing a little dinner in your city, or if you have a book and you wanna do a little book tour, even virtual opportunities for you to connect with your audience, there has to be more than just social media comments and DMs. Give people an opportunity to really experience what it's like to be in your room, because those people actually become your street team out in the world, because they've had that level of interaction with you that not everybody has, and yet you're gonna have people cheerleading you even when you're not in the room. So I wanna leave you with this. Don't just capture attention, capture hearts. Don't just create content, create connections. And don't just share stories, inspire others to tell theirs. Thank you. Thank you, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Quick question. Sure. What's the F word? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Finance? Find me outside, I'll let you know. <laughs> Let's give her another round of
round of applause. Thank you so much.